Hey people, this is a 2012 Holden Cruise. I'm about to remove the engine and the gearbox assembly. I'm going to lift this up through the engine bay. Um, to kick things off, I'm just going to drain out the engine oil. Then I'm going to drain out the gearbox oil. This is just so that it doesn't make a mess once that I've got it out. The gearbox doesn't have any nice drain points. You just need to take this cover plate off. Um, once these bolts are loose, often you'll need to give it a bit of a tap just to loosen it and then the gearbox oil can come on out. So the exhaust pipe is connected to the bottom of the catalytic converter. Um, this one has one bolt and two nuts. These are typically quite badly rusted. In my case I was pretty lucky and it came away fairly easily. Um, you just want to pull the exhaust out of the way and there's a little metal gasket in there, don't forget about that. Under the front right hand side there is a um, access point that you can reach up to drain the coolant. Um, most of the coolant had already been drained out of this car before I got it into the workshop um, but it's a good time to drain it while you're underneath the car. On the front left hand side of the engine is two bolts that secure the front engine mount to the transmission. Undo these two bolts. Um, the rest of the mount can stay in place as it won't get in the way when you lift the engine out. Now I want to remove the two drive shafts. This is the same process for both sides. You'll need to remove the wheel. Then you'll need to remove the large centre nut that secures the CV joint in through the hub. Without taking that nut off fully, you can give it a few taps on the end just to make sure that that CV joint can slide through the splines on the hub. Now you'll need to remove the nut that secures the tie rod end. Um, I like to put the nut back on and just give it a nice good tap from above and hopefully it breaks the taper. Next you want to remove the bolt and the nut that secure the hub to the suspension strut. There are two of these. Once these both have been loosened, sometimes you need to give them a little bit of a tap to come on out and then you can pull the hub assembly off the suspension strut. With the hub now loose you can pull that CV joint out of the hub and looking at the other end of the drive shaft you do need to lever this out of the gearbox. Um, the right sort of lever here will make this quite easy but you just need to wedge it in behind there and pop it free. With that end removed you can now withdraw the whole drive shaft assembly. This is the repeated now on the other side of the car. I haven't showed that here but it's the exact same process. It's just a different length drive shaft. Whilst you're at the back of the engine there, there are four bolts that secure that rear engine mount in place. You can remove those four bolts and then you can see that the engine is has the ability to rock backwards and forwards. It's a good time too to remove the O2 sensor plug because um, that's right at the back of the engine as well. Heading back underneath the bonnet, I'm going to remove the bracket that secures the battery in place. Then I'm going to remove all the electrical connections and the terminal off the negative post. Then I can remove the positive terminal and remove the battery from the car. Underneath this cover here, there is still a cable that runs into this little fuse box here. With this bolt removed, you can remove this cable and then just get that little fuse box and just push it up and out of the way. Now I just want to remove the battery box out of the way so I'm going to start by removing the connections onto the ECU and then there's three bolts that secure the battery tray in place. We're going to loosen those three bolts. Just in front of the battery box you can see where the negative cable attaches to the body. Um, with a nut here you can remove that connector. Also there is a number of plugs and clips um, where wiring is attached to this battery box. You just need to go around and pull all of those out and then the battery box is clear. Underneath the battery box you'll see two large electrical connectors. Um, these are for the front engine wiring harness. These will need to be undone, both of these, um, and then they'll need to be disconnected from each other. Um, in order for you to keep the wiring harness with the engine because that's how I prefer to remove it. Now the black one stays in the car but the grey one needs to be um, disconnected from the black one. 
There is a little clip up in between the two, that if you can pry that clip open, then that gray one can slide off the black clamp. Then we move up to the main fuse box. Once you open up this fuse box, you'll see that there's three large bolts. Once these bolts have been loosened, you can pry the top half of the fuse box apart and undo the connectors that are underneath. You can see here there's a total of six plastic lugs that hold this together. But once you've opened those up, you can lift this fuse box up um, and it separates itself from the fuse box underneath and then there's a series of plugs that can come out. You need to remove those plugs. Now just to give yourself a little bit of extra room, I not only take these pipes off the coolant reservoir, I also take the coolant reservoir out of the way as well. So the pipes come off quite easily um, and then there's a small clip on this side that can just be eased up with a screwdriver and then you can wiggle the coolant reservoir out of the way. Now you're looking at here where the two heater hoses go into the firewall. I've already removed one. You just need to pry that clip up, give it a wiggle and then slide that heater hose off. And whilst we're doing coolant hoses, there is the hose at the front. Now there may be different clamps securing this hose in place, but we'll remove that one from the front of the engine. At the same sort of spot on the engine there is the hose that goes into the clutch slave cylinder. Again, it's got a little clip that you just need to pry out and then you'll be able to pull out this hose. Now I've pulled this hose out here, but I've also just plugged it up and just pushed that clip back in so I don't lose it. Moving on to the other side of the engine, I'm gonna remove the plug for the mass airflow sensor and just remove that wiring and put it out of the way. Now I can remove the clamp for the intake hosing. It just slides off. And there's a pipe that sits on the air cleaner assembly. Once that's out of the way, you can pull the air cleaner up and out of the way. Just at the front right hand side of the engine there is where the pipes go into the air conditioner compressor. This had a gas leak, so there was no gas in the system anyway. Um, if you wish to leave the gas in the system, you can just remove the compressor from the block and leave it in place while you pull the engine out. With those removed, you've got a little bit more room just to get to the clip for that other radiator hose. Um, it's a little bit difficult to get in here, but a good set of pliers on that clip will have that clip out of the way, and then you just need to remove that pipe. Looking at where the shift cables connect to the selector, um, I'm just putting a pair of pliers in behind the plastic connector and then just levering it off. Um, you can see that there is a um, plastic sort of a, a head or a, a nut that you can actually undo, but often these are locked in and you can't get them. I tried to undo it, the little cap on this one and you can see here it's winding off fairly easily and then the shift cable can just be moved off um, off that shift linkage bracket there like that. With those removed you want to remove now the actual shift cables from where they mount onto the gearbox. Now one of these was in good condition and one of the clips was broken so if you just squeeze the top of it it can then just slide up and slide out of that bracket and then that whole shift cable can be pushed out of the way. Now the second one I've got here which looks a little bit more yellow. Um, it's been broken or cracked or damaged, um, but I'm still able to sort of get a pair of pliers onto it and just lever it in and then slide it up. Obviously it's going to need to be replaced. These shift linkages have lots of different clips, clamps and fittings over the years, so they're all a little bit different, so I can't just give you a one size fits all solution to this here. But they do need to come out, and you can see here they're both slid out of their housing and can now just be pushed aside. Moving up from those shift cables but on the same side of the engine you have the brake booster vacuum pipe. You need to squeeze the two sides of the uh, plug-in and then it can just slide out like that. On top of the intake here we have a vent hose for the uh, fuel tank purge system. It just pulls out um, and we also have the actual fuel line. I like to leave this right towards the end so that I don't have spilt fuel 
um, over the engine while I'm working on it. This little black collar that's just um, can't be seen at the moment because the pipe's got in the way of the camera, um, but you can just lift it up and then the whole assembly slides off. I like to also just crimp this hose so that I don't get any more fuel spilling out of that pipe. So I'm using some D shackles here just to secure some chain onto the factory lift points. Um, I've also got an engine leveler here which just makes it a little bit easy to pull out because it means I can put the engine at the angle that I want it to. I'm just lifting a little bit of weight off the engine mount so I can remove the front engine mount on both sides. Once I do this, the engine crane is supporting all of the weight, so the engine may rock around a little bit, so just be careful of that. Also, I've noticed that the hydraulic line for the clutch slave cylinder was in the way, so I've just moved it out of the way as well. Now you can begin just to lift the engine a little bit. I only want to lift it up an inch or so because the power steering pump is still connected, but it's so much easier to access if the engine's a fraction higher than where it typically sits. Now there are two bolts that secure the power steering pump just to a bracket and you can access the bolts through the hole in the pulley. Now the pulley hole doesn't always line up so you do need just to use a screwdriver and move it around. Um, if the belt's not on it's much easier but you can move it anyway. Once those bolts are removed you can grab the power steering pump and just push it off to the side. And this way we haven't had to disconnect any of those lines. With that pump out of the way you're now free just to start lifting this engine up. It is fairly tight and it is, um, it is likely to catch on a few things as it goes up. Particularly on that gearbox end, um, there's not a lot of room. Now the engine will need to be on a little bit of an angle because this end of the gearbox has a tendency just to catch on that bracket. But once you're past that bracket, it's all, it's all fairly open and free. As you're lifting it up, make sure you are double checking that you've unplugged everything and there's nothing catching or any cables being stretched or broken. I've also used a piece of timber there just to hold the bonnet open a little bit further um, just so that I can squeeze that engine out with the bonnet still in place. Hey now this took me about two hours with filming um, so I've condensed it into about 12 minutes of video so there are a few little details I've left out but if there are any comments or questions please leave them below. Thanks for watching.